<laughs> right? And I'm not playing no games. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, since we're going to the rabbit hole with you guys, and since everybody's talking Daredevil, I said, well, for Megan, we'll just show off some Daredevil. So I'm not sure how to do this. Let's see what will happen if I do this button. There you go. That works. Okay. So I still want to see you. <laughs> so, like I said, we've talked about Frank Miller endlessly. You've read that Wolverine series. You've read some of the Dark. I think, did you read Dark Knight Returns? You read Killing Joke, but I don't think you read um, Dark Knight Returns. Not yet. yet. No. Not yeah. Yet. So there's some Frank Miller stuff out there. So he took over Daredevil. This is long before Batman. This is in the, this is in, uh, uh, 80. I know he started in 81 and 168. So 12 issues before that would be 150s. Yeah. This is like 1980. So sometimes he does art. Sometimes he does the writing. This is Bullseye uh, kicking. You know, look at the cover. You know, very dynamic. Very dynamic. So these are some of those. I'll go through some of them quickly, but then I'll point out a couple of where the treasures come into play. By the way, some of you have asked me about the little barcode, why there's a barcode versus... Well, these are both have barcodes. This one does not have a barcode. It's perfect. So this one does not have a barcode. Hmm. Newsstand. It's called Newsstand right there. So this was in like a grocery store or a, a marketplace that gets scanned. Whereas oh. this is considered direct, which would go to a store or somebody's house. There's a premium on these for certain grades because it's harder to find them. Because if they're in a store, they're being manhandled, right? People will pick them up, bend them over. You'll find marks right here down the spine. And mine does too. They're not, these are not in great, great condition. These are my, I couldn't afford to have kept it. This one's actually nice for a newsstand, especially. I, don't know, I can't get it great. It's, it's got a couple of marks, but. I didn't even realize that, actually. <laughs> no, no, yeah. It's all sorts of crazy things that to come in. No, I'm going to like look on all my. And comments. that was kind of a non issue for years. People would debate it because there was this company in Colorado and they were the one, one of the first ones that kind of added a premium price for their newsstand issues. And it was like, nah, 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 nah. That's a lot of the, a lot of the collectors were like, no. And I just, as I kind of was going through it, I started to realize, you know, I think they may be right. <laughs> Cause I don't see any newsstand ones that are in any good condition. So I would kind of look for some newsstands, things like that. So, but he even like, they even did a Doc Ock issue. Like that was extremely yeah. unorthodox from back in the day that Daredevil would face off against Doc Ock. So that's pretty cool. So, yep. So I don't have the issue where he introduces Electra, but this is the second issue where he makes. So Miller takes over writing and art, and he elevates Bullseye to like a real villain in this issue, and he explains his issues in his brain, and then he does a three story arc with Kingpin. And if any of you know about the Netflix show, this is uh, the inspiration for a lot of that. Is that Netflix show any good? The Daredevil? Yes. Yeah. Season one is the best comic book adaptation to date. Okay. By far. Like the it's number one and two. Like it's <laughs> yeah, season one is that good. Like it's yeah. so dark and gritty. And it literally is the pages. So when you if you were to watch my review and you watch the show, you'll be like, Oh yeah, I can see exactly what they did. Okay. I, I purposely did like a spoiler deep dive frame by I did like a whole mm -hmm. bunch of panels because I wanted people to really appreciate that show. Because when Disney does what Disney's going to do, mm. we have to keep directing people back up to the gold. <laughs> this is where they need to go. Go spin your wheels here. So, <laughs> but look at the look at the. There's blood. It's supposed wow. to be blood where they're fighting the the, the hand. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So let me jump a few because I have so many. When we get to this issue. The issue that made me cry. Hmm. I didn't know. I didn't know it was going to happen. <sighs> yeah. I was shocked. I cried a little bit, I think. I definitely was <laughs> emotional about it. You admitted it, too. Look, that's how I felt. That's how I felt. Dang. Yep. Yeah. And then they come up with they come up with issues like this that make you feel just about as emotional, even though he just that's not exactly how it plays out. But look at that Punisher! Wow, yeah, they bring Punisher into the TV show in season two, and John Bernthal's Punisher is fantastic. So, but just the covers are incredibly dynamic and interesting. Um, and they just make you want to buy comic books. There's so oh, much yeah. action and motion, and you know, and then. 
we get some stuff I think that you would enjoy. I know you've already become fond of Wolverine. Mm. You get Wolby DD crossovers <laughs> for an issue here. Let's see, not those. Let's see. Try to make sure they don't fall over. It's sneaky because they'll stick it like this, so they kind of hook you. Uh -huh. Wolverine, like in here, like wait a minute, wait, Wolverine's in it, and then like the part two is, is even better. You're like, oh, oh yes, it is. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I, I know. love that cover. Isn't that beautiful. So yeah, that's uh, and this is one I would highly recommend for any of you that want something that's not super expensive. Man without fear. Frank Miller does a like a little mini series. It's five parts. And he basically stays in line with with the bigger story and redoes the origin story and and kind of the journey and some of that kind of stuff. And you can get a five part. Somebody might have a bundle, and or you'll get a graphic novel, relatively inexpensive. It shouldn't be very very much. So, yeah, I would uh, I would say those are all good good ways to get into it so but you haven't read daredevil yet have you no i haven't yeah, yeah. but those look fantastic <laughs> it's kind of like well it's marvel's batman in a lot of ways yeah. so, i mean different powers but it's like it's a real dude it's street crime there's cool villains but then it's like after this issue then we'll have like a crime story where it's just like street crime and then oh wait back so and so's out of jail or whatever so it's really much it's very similar and i think that's why i was just i was lucky too because i kind of was drawn to both so soon mm -hmm. after one another, and that was Mike. That was my thing. So, why are people saying Netflix Daredevil is not canon? I th I think that they're referring to the Disney stuff because Disney has said it's not MCU. So I think that's what you're referring to um, because Disney is not acknowledging Netflix stuff as part of their world. They're, they're kind of cheating. They want their cake and eat it too. They kind of are taking it as canon, but they're not. So hmm. it's typical. A big company wants it both ways. And people are going crazy talking about how great season one is. So you have tons of people who are backing me up on that. So yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fun. It's fun to watch. Yeah, it's good. So yeah, it's canon to me. Yeah, so <laughs> season one is season one is canon, and season two is great. I like season two. Um, season three starts to fall off quite a bit, but I still like it, and it's definitely all better than what we're getting on Disney Plus. So, I mean. This is going to make E.T. look like Raiders of the Lost Ark. You know what I'm saying?